Thank you, Jordan. Thank you. Well, we have a, a wonderful, wonderful speaker tonight. Um, I have known, let's see, we started Life Recovery Central 11 or 12 years ago. Is, it, is this our 12th year? I think it is. And when we were announcing that group, um, it was on a Wednesday night, this, this young lady um, said, I want to be a part of that. And she was a part from the beginning. And so when we, we came to the point of launching Celebrate Recovery, she was a part of our launch team. Um, she has been here from the beginning, and um, she inspires me. She is one of the kindest, um, uh, most amazing ladies I've ever met in my life, and somebody that I call family. And so will you do me a favor? Will you welcome my sweet friend and family member, Diana? forever family. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ who's in recovery from alcohol, drugs, and sexual addiction. And my name is Diana. <clears throat> I was born in Little Rock, Arkansas at the Old Baptist Hospital. My parents are Carl and Hazel. They both had been married before, so I have a brother and four sisters. When they married, they had me and my baby sister, Carla Gale. My parents fought all the time. My dad was an alcoholic. He would say horrible things. One time I was about four years old and he was fighting with my mama. I remember him telling her he wished I had never been born. Even being a little girl, I remember the pain I felt like I didn't matter. The effect these words had on my life was always in my mind. I would, I would tell myself that I really didn't matter. I can remember my parents fighting. My mama would get beat up. She would have black eyes and bruises. I thought this was all my fault. My parents fighting caused the police to be called to our house. So the whole neighborhood knew what had happened. I can remember going to school so embarrassed and being talked about. Even experiencing a night of hell, we were to act like everything was okay. It sounds like there was a pink elephant in our house. I would try to protect me and Carla Gale the best way a little girl knew how. There was a time of them fighting. I got in between them trying to make my dad stop hitting my mama. My dad wrapped a telephone cord around my neck. Did he really hate me that much? So see, even at that young age, I'm trying to save my mama and I'm trying to save my sister. When I wasn't trying to wash dishes and I had to stand in a chair, I was trying to take care of everything. What a huge amount of burden I thought I had to carry. My parents divorced when I was six. My mama worked several jobs. So now I'm playing the role of a mother to Carla Gale. Just making sure, just making sure we done what had to be done in the house. One time, Carla Gale asked mama, who is my mama? And she said, Diana or you? And of course, mama told her, when I'm not here, she is. My grandmother and my sister Peggy would take care of us if Mama was working at night. My grandmother had a boarding house. Several men lived downstairs in the basement. They worked and my grandmother fixed their meals for them. The washer and dryer was down in the basement. I would go down there and help fold clothes. These men eventually sexually abused me I never told anyone until about 20 years ago because I was so afraid. My dad would have weekend visits with me and Carla Gale. We would sneak his non-filtered camel cigarettes and try to smoke them. I was about 14 years old and my dad asked me if I wanted a beer and that one beer was all it took for me to feel special 
I felt pretty, I felt smart, and I felt loved. Times were different in those days. I could actually sit in a beer joint and drink with my dad. I graduated high school. I moved in with my sister, Peggy, and other roommates. I now could do whatever I wanted. I started using drugs and drinking, going to bars and clubs. Yes, I thought I had reached adulthood. At 17, I got a job in a dental office. I would work there during the day and party at night. I became two complete different people. When I went to clubs, I would get drunk and I would go home with whoever paid attention to me. At the age of 19, I had an abortion. And still to this day, I hurt over that decision. The father wanted nothing to do with me or the baby. I still remember how lost and lonely I felt. I will never forget that horrible day. After this, it seemed I drank more and more, and I wasn't afraid to try any kind of drug. I really wanted to stay as numb as I could possibly be. I have woke up in places that I have no idea how I got there or who I was even with. I have realized that not only I had a drinking problem, but I also had a sexual addiction that I would act out on when I got drunk. You see, I was as sick as my secrets. And as ugly as it sounds, I used sex to make me feel wanted and loved. There was even a few times that I did say no, but was forced upon. That is still called rape. For years, I thought God was punishing me for the abortion I had because of all the miscarriages I have gone through. It was through a class called Save One and a step study that God showed me I was forgiven and he loved me. But I still struggle to forgive myself and I continue to seek God every day. My family has always loved me but knew I needed help. I know they prayed. Carla Gell told me after I got sober that God had answered her prayer, that she had been praying each night for me. I would go days not seeing and speaking to them. They didn't know if I was dead or alive. Carla Gell was not only my baby sister, she was my angel, she was my friend, she was my rock, and we took care of each other. I had been married once, my ex-husband drank and partied also. We would fight, I was physically abused many times, now I'm the one with the black eyes and bruises. I would lie about what happened. Several of my, several of my employers knew I had a drinking problem. I have always been in physical, mental, sexual, abusive relationships, thinking this is all I ever deserved. Years ago, my ex-husband called me, and he asked me for forgiveness and made amends for his wrongs, in which I forgave and asked for his forgiveness because I know I was wrong also. He has also sought recovery, and to this day, we are friends, and we are here for each other. I have always wanted to fix someone so that they would think I was important and would want to love me. I think we call this codependency. See, I can go to any group we have. <laughs> In 2000, I was dropped off at Recovery Centers of Arkansas, a treatment center with one small bag of clothes. I had reached my rock bottom. I was living in a dump, no utilities, no food, cockroaches crawling around on the floor, and I didn't care. All I wanted to do was stay drunk. See, I was digging my own grave. So I finally asked for help. I stayed in recovery centers of Arkansas for 30 days. They told me I could leave, but I was so afraid. See, I had never lived without alcohol and drugs. I stayed in a chem-free home for 18 months. I got a job at Community Bakery, and I would walk there every day. I saved enough money to get a car. In Jeremiah 29, 11, God tells us, 
I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. I have always held on to that promise. I am reminded daily of God's mercy and grace. In 2006, I was sober, but I wasn't happy. I would pray to God to please help me. I was tired of trying to change others whom I had no control over. I realized I needed God. I had gone to First Assembly as a child. God was speaking to me about my life. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will set your path straight. I'd heard Pastor Lang and Marcia talking about a Sunday school class, Life Recovery. God was opening another door for me to be able to heal. They invited me to my first CR at Fellowship Bible. Being a newcomer, I knew that I needed CR. I needed to stay sober, and I needed God. Through the church, I have continued my healing through taking classes like Safe One, Journey to Total Freedom. A couple of years ago, Byron taught a class that helped me to face so many difficult things from my past and also from the present. I believe in step studies. My first one was at Fellowship Bible. I am currently in my sixth step study. Each one of these, God has shown me things that in his time, I was able to go there and continue my healing from areas of my life that has caused me so much pain. I believe no harm can come to me that can't be overcome by God. There are days I have just gone through the emotions, but I keep trying to go forward. For me, it has always been one moment at a time. I had a counselor at RCA, Ms. Carroll, who always told me to keep God with me. In 2015, me and my sisters were told my mama had dementia and needed 24-hour supervision. Even though I had promised her I would never place her in a nursing home, that is exactly what I did. So now I have to deal with that guilt, even though I know she's being well taken care of. We would all go and see her every day until COVID happened. But I praise God that in the last few weeks, I have been able to see her. Even though I can't hug her, or I can't even hold her hand, I can sit with her, and I'm so grateful for that. A few years later, Carla Gale was having problems at home, and she knew she needed healing. She loved CR. She found hope, freedom, happiness. I'm so happy she told Pastor Lane, sure, I'll greet. I love people to becoming a wonderful leader, a sponsor, and praise God, her own personal healing. I share this so that you know people will notice the difference in you and will want that healing. Carla came and lived with me. We really enjoyed being together again. We would laugh, talk, dance, just like we did when we were little girls, when it was just us. I kept noticing she was losing weight and had a slight cough. We talked and thought it would be a good idea for her to go to the doctor. One day, we were looking for her in apartments. She was so very excited because she had never lived on her own. Then while sitting in the car, we got the call. Cargill had cancer. After several more tests, we were told it was stage four lung cancer. So we decided it was best for her to stay with me. She did her chemo treatment, she did her radiation treatments. And then she was in remission, and we were all so happy. Then months later, her cancer returned. Carla Gale is the most courageous, 
strongest person I have ever known. You know, I prayed. I really believed God was going to heal her. On January 25th, 2020, God took my baby sister home to heaven. I have experienced a lot of physical and emotional abuse in my life. But I have never, ever felt this kind of pain. I will never be the same. A part of me is gone. You know, I really didn't know if I was going to make it. But you see, I made a promise to her. I want to see her again. I am so blessed to have a forever family and celebrate recovery to be there for me. If it hadn't been for God, this church, and celebrate recovery, I really don't know where I would be today. I have had to seek help with my grief because of my anger towards God. I will start a grief share group in April. I'm grateful to be able to share the pain and anger I am going through. Because I realize that I need people who have been there and will understand. I'm reaching for help, not the addiction. My favorite step is step three. We made a decision to turn our lives and our will over to the care of God. I know for me, I needed the almighty God. God has never let go of my hand. He is always right by my side. My beautiful family loves and trusts me. I don't have to wear a mask today to be loved. Because of God and celebrate recovery, I am no longer ashamed of my past. Because that is what it is, my past. I'm a child of God. I'm a new creation. Yes, he still has a plan for me. I will trust him and I want to follow wherever he wants me to go. I'm honored to share my hurts, habits, and hang-ups with others. I want them to experience the miracle that only God can do. I am so blessed with my forever family. My Heavenly Father works through others to help show us the way to truth and life. There are days that Satan tries so hard to take me back to that place that I don't live there anymore. Joshua 1.9 have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous? Do not be terrified or be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. God is bigger than any of my circumstances. I do believe God makes you stronger through your struggles. My prayer to God is Psalms 25, 5. Lead me, teach me, for you are the God who gives me salvation. And I have no hope except in you. I pray that God will open my heart and I ask for him to give me seeing eyes, hearing ears, and direct my steps. God says I can, then I can do all things through Christ. I need to keep crying out to God for his wisdom and power to help me walk this recovery journey. Don't ever give up. And if you fall, just get up. Keep on going. Your forever family will not judge you. We will love you and help you. To the newcomer, you have taken the first step. You are here tonight. If you came in here feeling worthless, that you had done too much, how could you be forgiven, and who even cares? Please listen and look around you. You're not alone. We are a forever family who truly loves you. I would love to encourage you to seek God, for he is waiting for you. He wants to forgive and set you free from your hurts, habits, and hang-ups. As God tells us in Isaiah 41.10, don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. I know this to be true. I was so afraid, and I felt so worthless. But through Celebrate Recovery, I have learned that I'm a good person. And that not only have I been forgiven, I'm loved, I'm free. I am, I am so grateful to this ministry. It has taught me 
not to only love others, but also love myself, which at one time I hated myself so much. But today I'm a new creation, a child of God. In Isaiah 18:1, come now, let's settle this, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, I will make them white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, I will make them white as wool. Celebrate Recovery has taught me it's okay not to be okay. I have been changed. I won't go back to the way I was living. And with God, all things are possible. I'm not who I used to be. I encourage you to attend Celebrate Recovery. It will change your life in so many ways. You will find forgiveness and healing. And as Pastor Lane says, try it for six weeks. And if you don't find any joy or healing, your misery back guaranteed. Thank you for letting me share. Um, wow. She, um, she inspires me. had some things to say, but I want to just say this. Um, if you need healing, this is where you come. I have uh, watched her walk through some difficult times. And what I love the most about her is she just keeps coming back. And that's something for every one of us to learn. Um, no matter how bad things are, just get up. Just keep coming back. God has a plan, and he's going to change your life. But you know what? He can't do anything if you stay down. So just keep showing up. And here's the thing. One of the, the most poignant things she said was, people will notice the healing in you. And they'll want what you have. Diana, I want what you have. Let's thank her again.
Yeah. 
Isn't that a great night? My name is Mike. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus. I'm a co for anger pornography. Thanks for spending time with us tonight. Those of you watching online, make sure you join us for open share groups at 8 p.m. If you haven't already registered, make sure you fill out the form at crfirstnlr.com. Your group leader will send you a message and a link to the group. And if you were here in person, just go to group. Here's your leader's question. What was your big takeaway from tonight's testimony? Share how CR is impacting your recovery. As you go to groups, please put on your masks and social distance as you leave the sanctuary. Newcomers, please go to the guest center, right out those, the hallway. And if you're watching online, I wanna encourage you to go to groups on online. Uh, but before we go to groups, my friend, Adam will come. Everybody doing all right tonight? I'm a faithful believer in Jesus Christ, overcoming drugs and alcohol and struggling with anger. My name is Adam. Uh, join me in the serenity prayer. God, grant me to the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace. Accepting as Jesus did, the simple world as it is, not as I would have it. Trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will. So that I'm be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. Y'all go to group.